Praise the Lord. Welcome again. It's still the State of the Union. Praise the Lord. We are still at it. The Lord says, tell my people to return to me. And so yesterday we began to look at this matter, which we started on Christmas Day. We began to look at this matter from a different direction. We engaged the matter of tell my people to return to me. We engaged it from the direction of the business of the husband and his bride. Yesterday, from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 and 3. And for the sake of uh, continuity, let me just read it to us once again. It says, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through the subtlety, through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I watch over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband. And I fear, lest Satan beguile you as he beguiled Eve that you may become corrupted from the simple that your minds be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So yesterday we noted the word husband, espoused, chest, and virgin. And then in going to verse 3, we saw the words subtlety which is deception, and then the corruption of the mind. In other words, the writer is afraid lest his subject become corrupted in his mind through deception. Through deception. Now, we said yesterday that the word chest and the word virgin if we agree with our largely loose understanding of both words should not occur in the same sentence because they mean virtually the same thing so the word chest for example refers to something reserved pure, undefiled. In fact, before the broadcast, I looked it up. And it refers to abstaining from extramarital or from all sexual intercourse, which makes it a word suitable in the marriage environment. And then it says it is a reference to something that is simple, restrained, without unnecessary ornamentation. Unnecessary ornamentation is a reference to that which we add to look beautiful or to make something look beautiful. Therefore, changing it from its natural state. Why did I introduce that? Because I said chest and virgin should not go together because they virtually refer to the same thing. Now, virgin, of course, is a reference to one who has never engaged in sexual activity. True. But in a broader sense, it also refers to something that is in its pure natural state, untouched, unspoiled, unprocessed, uncorrupted, not yet exploited, like a virgin land. So when he says chest virgin, he is talking about something that has not, or a virgin that has not been touched, has not been processed, has not been defiled or corrupted. So it says that I have espoused you to one husband so that I may present you to Christ as a virgin that has not been corrupted, as a bride that has not been touched it's in its pure state. And then he states what the problem is. 
he says that he fears that as Eve was deceived, that the deceiver in his subtlety not corrupt our mind. So there is a possibility of our mind being corrupted. So when God says, return to me, my bride, when he says return to me and he's talking about his church, he's talking about his people, he's talking about his bride, by implication, we said yesterday, the bride has either been derailed or been deceived out of the way or has walked away, has become distracted or influenced by something other than her husband. Now, somebody may say, how does that exactly pertain to us? Which is why I took time to look up the words chaste, virgin, and defiled. Now, for you to have something in its virgin state, for you to have something that is chaste, for you to have something that is undefiled, what you are saying is that it is in its pure state, untouched, and for our purposes, uncorrupted. In its pure state means that it is in its true state. You touch it, you change the nature. Now it becomes corrupted. Okay. Now, this is how sin corrupted the nature of man at the beginning. Now, I said, why did I go through the pain of looking up all of these words? Because I wanted to make a clear presentation to you this afternoon. So we understand what is in the book, what is in the scriptures, what the Bible has to say about the business of our being corrupted. Or of our having been corrupted already. Otherwise, why is the Lord saying, return to me, for I fear that you may be or have become corrupted in your minds? Let me read a few portions of the scripture. In Ephesians chapter 5, we are told from verse 25, it says, Husband, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he should that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the water, with the washing of the water of the word, that he might present it to himself as uh, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So what the Lord is looking for which is what the author of 2 Corinthians 11, 2 and 3 is saying. I want to present you to Christ as a chaste virgin, uncorrupted. Ephesians says exactly the same thing. The Lord wants to present to himself. He wants to receive to himself a pure bride, spotless, without wrinkle, and blemish-free. And blemish-free. Spotless, without wrinkles, and blemish-free. Now, we may say that this is just a play on words. These are just words, spots. We know what a spot is. S-P-O-T. We know what a spot is. We know what a wrinkle is. We know what a blemish is. Of course, from the Old Testament, the God already said that any sacrifice that was to be brought to him should not have any of all these things. So will he now accept those things with his bride? So when he says to his bride, return to me, in the circumstance, he is saying, return to me because you have become spotted. You have taken on wrinkles and you now have blemishes. Return to me. Not just that you prepare yourself by getting rid of those things, but he says, return to me, which is when we return to him, we will lose those things. I mean the spots, the wrinkles and the blemishes. But what do these things mean? Are they like the black spots you see on your skin? Or like this one on my face? Are these the spots we are talking about? Or perhaps the wrinkles on my face? Are these the ones we are talking about? Of course not. You see, let me, let me give you something extra. When you read the Bible, appreciate, not just that it was written by the Spirit and therefore will be interpreted to you by the Spirit. Not just that. Different parts of the scripture are often used to explain other parts of the scripture. Now, I want to do 
that. I want to give an example of that today. So we understand what God is saying when he says to his bride, return to me. I want you spotless, without wrinkle, and blemish free. I want us to understand. He wants a spotless church. He wants a blemish free church. Now this is what the Bible has to say on the, business, on the subject of being spotted. The reference is really to 2 Peter chapter 2, particularly about verse 12. It says, But these, as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evils of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. And they shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it riot, as they account it pleasure to riot in the day. And it says, Spots they are and blemishes, spotting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Verse 14, having eyes full of adultery and they cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and hearts they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. He said, they are what? Spots and blemishes among you. Who are they? He says they, are, they spot themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with us. So they are amongst us in the church. He says, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and act that they have exercised with covetous practices. You see that word, covetous practices. We will get back to it shortly. But my immediate business is the description of what the Bible is referring to when it uses the word spots and blemishes. The Lord wants a spotless and blemish-free church. Now he has identified for us what he means by spots and blemishes. They are human beings in the church, among us. And what is the identity of these human beings? If you read the story in its proper context, so we have to start from Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Verse 1 says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false prophets among you, who will privately bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves destruction. He identifies them as false prophets, false teachers, beloved, let me tell you something. It is not God's responsibility to remove, as it were, false prophets and false teachers from among us. He will help his people, yes. But he has given us clues. He has given us tools by which we can identify falsehood. So he says, return to me. Because these spots are among you and they feast with you. Feast with you means what? They do church with you. They are among you as Christians. He says, return to me. In this context, it will be separate yourself from them. Separate yourself from them and return to the Lord. We have the responsibility, just as Jesus is not coming to bind any devil for you, you have been given the authority to do so. He has finished his job, he has gone. Now we are in clay. We have the authority in the name of Jesus now to take care of demons. In the same way, by the same vein, we have tools in the word of God by which we can recognize false prophets and false teachers. The problem is, why are they still able to spot among us? Why are they able to, to hang around in our love feasts? Why are they able to be called church people? Why is God saying, return to me, separate yourself from them? He is identifying them and he says that they are in the church. They are feasting with us as Christians. Okay, you are not satisfied with Second Peter. Let me give you a second witness. I'll take that now from Jude. That's the last book in the Bible before the book of Revelation. From Jude, Jude has only one chapter. It starts from verse 4. The narrative starts from verse 4. It says, For there are certain men crept in unawares, 
who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord our Savior, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's verse 4. He has not said anything about sports yet. Now we go over to verse 11. It says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and have run greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of call. Verse 12. He said, These are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of wings, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. In other words, there are some people among us who or whom we have received as of the church and we fellowship with them. He says they are among us. He says they have crept in on our, on our ways. We have accepted them. But the Bible is, is identifying them. It's, it's giving us the tools by which we can recognize them. He talks about lasciviousness. He talks about they have denied the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he adds that they have gone the way of Balaam. They have gone in the way of the error of Balaam. What was the error of Balaam? It was the error of gain. He went after gain. Even when God told him not to prophesy, he was tempted to prophesy because he was looking at what was promised him. Yet the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 that all them that will be rich will fall into what? Many snares. What is the meaning of snare there? Temptations. Opportunities to be deceived. We fall into snares. We fall into the open gully that the devil has planted in their way to deceive them. He said these are the ones who preach gain as godliness. They are in the church. And they are hiding behind the prosperity message to do all this. Did you hear what I said? They are hiding behind the prosperity message. I am not quarreling with the prosperity message. I said they are hiding behind it to feed themselves. Read the book. To feed themselves. The prosperity message was never meant to feed us. God already said that he knows our needs and he will meet our needs by himself. That we should seek after his righteousness and his kingdom. And he will do that for us. The prosperity message was never meant to feed us. The prosperity message was meant to be used for the purpose of the kingdom. It has always been so. If you turn the prosperity message on his head, then it becomes about you. Christianity was never about you. It's always been about Jesus. It's always been about God in Christ. I'm about to land. And my time is up. But I must land. Please bear with me. Just a few more moments. I'm building a case for what the Bible refers to chaste virgin. Unspotted, blemish free, without wrinkle. The Bible is identifying to us what the spots are. He says they are false prophets. He said they are men who have crept in unawares. Their unawares means that we did not take note when they got inside the church. And so God is asking his people, separate yourselves from those things and come back to me. Lasciviousness is not of the, of the Lord. Gain is not godliness. He says separate yourself. Otherwise, how are you going to return to him if you don't separate yourself from where you have gone to? Or what you have been listening to? Or those that you have given your ears to? I said one more point, And then we call it a day. And hopefully continue tomorrow. My final point is taken from Revelation chapter 2. In verse 12, it says, And so to the angel of the church in Pegas Pegamos write, In other words, this is a letter to the church. That's verse 12. Makes it clear that what you are about to read is a reference to the church. Now in verse 14, it says, But I have a few things against you, against thee, because thou hast them, Thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. They are with you in the church. They have gone the way of Balaam, the way of gain. 
I hear some people preach that the business of Christianity is transactional. It's a transaction between you and God. In other words, every time you obey God, there is something to be gained. Do you see how the error creeps in? Do you see how the error creeps in? It is true. Every time you obey God, there is something to be gained. But when you preach it while preaching prosperity, it changes the picture. The Lord says to tell you to return to him. That makes it your responsibility to identify the falsehood that has corrupted your mind so that you can return to the simplicity of Christ. The easiest way to discover is the business of the error of Bala. The business of gain is godliness. He said the people who are doing this thing, he said there are spots among you. That is, they are the things that are causing the defilement. They are the things that are causing the blemishes. In one place he says, this is true religion, one that is unspotted from the world. Unspotted. That is, the world has not spotted you, has not become a spot on you. Following the world, or doing the things of the world, or going after the things of the world, has not become a spot on you. I'm out of time for today. Perhaps tomorrow, we will look at the various ways that the Bible has shown us on how to identify the false prophet, the lying spirit, and falsehood in the church. Why? They are corrupting the minds of Christians from the truth. In one place it says, by whom the truth of God will be trampled a foot. He said, by which the truth in Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, I think. He said, no, chapter 10. He said, by which the truth of God shall be cast down. He said, having known God, they did not hold him in, in righteousness. They have held the truth of God in unrighteousness. We have to be able to define, to identify them so that we can separate from them and return to the Lord. That's my business for today. We'll be back again same time tomorrow. Hopefully. If the Lord permits, let's identify these spots and wrinkles, these blemishes that are amongst us, so that we can purge ourselves. He said, if a man purge himself, he will be a vessel unto honor, meat that is suitable for the master's use. You have to purge yourself. You have to cleanse yourself. You know, when you see spots on your body, what do you do? Back here in your home in Africa, what do you do? You buy bleaching cream. Something to remove the spots. Okay, you can address me as bleaching cream. Or the word of God as the bleaching cream. Tomorrow we will apply some of that bleach from the word of God. And get rid of the spots that are amongst us. Or at least begin to identify them. So that we can walk away. I said the other day. If where you are fellowshipping only excites your sensibilities. You should run away from that place. Tomorrow we we'll begin to identify the falsehood. The false prophet. And the lying spirit that has crept into the church. For just one reason only, so that we can separate ourselves and return to the Lord. See you again same time tomorrow. God bless you as we continue with the broadcast, the State of the Union. Return to me, see the Lord.